I'm really getting tired of living this way. And it doesn't take long when you're living in 70 square feet to let it well get like this within a couple of days. You leave a couple handfuls of things here and there and before you know it, you don't put your clothes away and you got shoes everywhere and you just toss the wet wipes and the cook stove by the door because you were just out at the campground and you didn't put it back away in a box. And before you know it, the inside of your van looks like, well, a homeless camp. And I'm not scared to show you guys how I'm living my day-to-day life. Sometimes I let things get out of hand, and especially in a home like this where I don't have a place to put everything. If you're just catching up on where I am, my van is actually broken down for repairs, and this is, well, my temporary home. Crazy, you're so cute today. Hi, buddy. Hi. Nice to see you sitting up. You must have slept all day yesterday, did ya? <laughs> did ya? Maybe if I got some time after I edit this morning, maybe we will go do some laundry, wash these mats on the floor, and vacuum this place out. But yeah, if I ditch those two bins back in my van, maybe this place will look like such a homeless camp. There's some vanners over there, and Mr. Lowly's off-road right there in the middle. Good morning, bro. Have a good day hunting, buddy. Lauren's taken off this morning, going for a little hunting trip with one of our subscribers. And I'm gonna take this much needed time this morning while he's away and clean the inside of this van. Because the dirtier it gets, the less and less I wanna be in here. And well, I won't be getting my home back for a little while. Okay, it's time to clean this thing up again. It's gotten out of hand in here. Use a blower, put it right out the back door. So I'm not using these dishes much. Let's take them out of the front, put them in the back. Hey, we got my Julka hot tap shower and we've got my cooking supplies. But because we're not using this, we've been staying in town a lot. I'm putting the Starlink back inside the shop. All right, let's look at the great mess. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Nice and tidy. I put the bins that I'm not using underneath. Got rid of the food out of here. That's it. Clothes, shoes, bed, battery. Putting a second battery there. So I'm running one battery to run my lights over there and my cell phones. This one over here is running the uh, uh, the heater, and that's it. Nice and simple, way cleaner. Oh, smells good in there too. Yum. One clean home. Thank goodness. This place got messy, and believe it or not, it took me like five minutes to clean this place up. That's it. I uh, all I did with these is I shook them out. Flip them inside out, that way the dirty side's on the inside because this side's nice and clean. And then when this side gets dirty, then I'll uh, I'll wash the whole thing. Took the blower, blew all the dirt right out the back, bada boom, got a home. Aw oh, yeah, and we're charging up the last battery. You wanna go get some cookies? Want some treats? Okay. Oh. No, you're not hungry. You wanna try that? I'll have to babysit you with that one though. Looks a little small. Alrighty, van's all nice and clean. We got the mechanic back in the house. What's up, buddy? Well, hello. I heard a rumor we're pulling that engine, or you're pulling that engine out today. Uh, no, that's. That was a close call. You. I just almost said we. Whew. That would be you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the whole intro of this video was them watching me clean my slob of a van.
All right, so here is the winch system that's on my van that was hidden behind the front bumper. When I was first looking at bumpers for this one, I couldn't afford one of those big fancy bumpers that have the winch area for it in the front. I'm like, I'm not spending like 2,000 bucks just to put a winch on my van just to get the bumper for it. So I went online and I found a bunch of forums that showed how to put the bumper into the Ford Econoline van behind the factory bumper. So on the front here was a fair lead. I had a friend of mine at J5 Custom Vans custom do this little bracket in the bottom. See, look what happens. <laughs> Ooh. You, that's from over there, the metal on that side. Ooh. So you can't get me in. You know when Chrome's done some work, Chrome's got some blood. So, uh, so what we did here is we put a front hitch for a Ford Econoline van. We ordered that online. It just bolts right in. It's meant for the Ford. Then on the top here, John welded in some support brackets. So he welded one across the top plus an angled one here for support so it's nice and strong. A great big angled chunk on the top. Made some custom pieces on the front to bring the fair lead through the bumper here. That way, that way we can bolt on the fair lead. And then this bolts on just as it would to, um, to any, other, any other winch bumper. But yeah, that's it. And that's how we hit it inside of here. The worn winches here, the four screws on the top have a brain box to it. We took all the stuff out of the brain box and bolted it to another bracket over here, which was then bolted to um, the bar that was running across there. But super simple, great way to get a winch on the front of your vehicle without having to buy a super expensive bumper and kind of hides it out of the way. I think it was awesome. And I think every van needs a front and rear hitch. I think that's mandatory for everyone because if you're ever out there and you're stuck and you don't have a winch, if you've got these, then at least someone's got a pull point. Yeah, a good pull point. Without this, there's no pull point, which means nobody can help you. Even if you guys are out there and you're looking at doing the backcountry stuff, getting a front and rear hitch could just be, a, and, and keeping some toe strap cables with you. Don't ever use a, a ball that it's on the hitch, like a, you know, for a trailer. Oh yeah, on the ball, yeah, yeah. Don't ever use that as yeah. a pulling point because that's really dangerous, mm -hmm. that can kill you. So yeah, like on here, it's got all sorts of anchor points on, on each side here too, plus the one here on the front. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I would, Link into this or link into this just kind of makes sense. If you keep a tow strap with you and have at least the hitches, some truck driving by the road might be able to help you out if you've got the gear. Yeah. You know, sure. like one of those little snatch straps. Don't use a regular strap that doesn't have that little pull to it because the guy will start yanking at you and probably rip everything right off the front of your vehicle. Having the one that's got the bit of play, that way it can take the bit of the jolt. Mm hmm. You know, especially with the stock bumper. Yeah, right? Because right? no, no. like a lot of times, like what I found is people want to get into doing this stuff, but now they're like, okay, now we got a thousand plus dollars for a winch. Now what? Now 3,000 for a bumper just to put yeah. through? That's five yeah. grand at yeah. a winch. Yeah. Where now you just got to, you know, buy the trailer hitch, get someone to have a super beefy bracket. Don't go cheapy on that bracket. No, because that bracket, it's the whole... That's everything. If that bracket thing. busts loose, that's it. The whole yeah. van busts loose. Yeah. Yeah, man, it was, uh, it was pretty awesome. That's crazy, dude. All that stuff coming off that motor, all the cables, look at all the wires here, guys. That's nuts. Everything's all been pulled off the top here. Pretty soon, that thing is gonna be out here somewhere. <laughs> Who's giving me love? Come on. Look at this guy, he's all talking about how good his heated jacket is. Yeah, I love it. Oh, I gotta get me one of these things. It's all lit up, it's all heated. Yeah, this is just like, you know, if I want it hotter, I can just go warm it up and it's like I'm roasting. But this is cozy, man. And for your back, it's just perfect. Ooh, it's on the back too, which means at the campfire, your oh, back's... Oh, yeah. I don't need to buy a camp chair anymore. Yeah, what for? All right, buddy. Thanks for everything today. Thanks for everything today. All right, man. I will be here, sir. All right, man. How beautiful that is, eh? No, oh, all lit up. Look at that thing. All lit up. Oh, yeah. well, that piece is working. When that's on, it's working. <laughs> all right, man. I'll see you in the morning. Okay, we got a little problem in here. I was just running the heater and my heater is giving me an error code of E05. We went online to have a look and it said to make sure 
There's nothing obstructing the fan, which is not. That the exhaust isn't pinched and the intake isn't plugged. Nothing looks altered at all in there. It's fine going up into the hole. Exhaust looks okay. One last check is to make sure that the fan in the back is rotating. So we're gonna turn this back on. All you gotta do is keep me warm tonight. That's all I care about. On. I can feel air blowing out of here, which means the fan in the back's gotta be working. Yeah, 100%. It's got a fan in the back that blows from the back all the way through to here. I mean, it's getting warm, it's working. I don't know how long. Cruzy, can you tell me how long the heater was off for? He's like, I don't know, Dad, it just got cold. There goes Loli's off-road. That man worked really hard today. Like seriously, worked his face off. But everything is unbuckled and just about ready to take out. So tomorrow, this thing is coming out, but it's already done. I think he's loosened up all the body mounts on the bottom. Everything has been stripped from the top. So this thing is gonna come out. And then uh, I guess the disassemble, I guess. Pulling all this stuff off, taking a look at the valve hole. I'm not the mechanic, remember? In yesterday's video, I said uh, PVC valve instead of PCV valve. That's how much I'm not a mechanic. Pulling that out, checking the valve stems, uh, and then maybe checking the pistons. I, I I don't know. Right now, I'm uh, hoping we have some heat tonight because it's freaking cold outside. And I don't want to freeze tonight. I don't want my puppy to be cold tonight. Let's check one more time. Oh, sounds like it's gotten quiet. E05. It's running on an air. It's still blowing heat, but it just shut off again. Well, it's blowing air, it's just cooling down. But it's warm in there. It ran for about 10, 15 minutes and then it just shuts off. Anybody know a solve for this E05? That's a new heater. We need to get this thing back up and running. The heater works in this thing all the time. I have a Wabasto gasoline heater in the back of this thing. It's been in here for, what, maybe three years now. Zero problems. Works every damn time I turn that heater on. It got a notification on there once last year when I was in Ontario. I said, hey, time for service. And the crew at Ray Outfitted pulled it all apart, took it all apart, and Rainer was like, yeah, bro, you didn't need a service on here at all. So I guess in the computer system on the fan, it just reads how many hours it's been run and gives you an automatic, hey, you should service this thing. He said he probably could have gotten two more years with how clean it was on the inside. And then now we have that heater out there throwing codes already. Oh, that, 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 that's not it. There's more. The one that's in my shop threw a E08 code today. I added more fuel to it and shut it off, turned it back on. It's been running the rest of the day since, but another one that threw a code. <sighs> Last thing I want this winter is to be cold, so I'm pumped up that this thing will be back on the road, hopefully very, very soon. And those of you who have had questions about uh, when we are going to cut the roof out of this ambulance, uh, Scott's coming out here probably around November 1st. That means this project might be going while this project is going. But uh, we, we will wrap up this one. Like we'll pretty much, we'll wrap this one in plastic while we work on this one. I also plan on building a entire plastic booth around this whole side. That way we can put fans at the door to pull all the drywall dust into the filters so we don't have to breathe a ton of it. So I'm gonna try to create this into like a, like a booth, you know, that's coming up. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna go curl up with Cruzy Bear. We might sleep outside the shop here tonight. Maybe we'll go for a drive somewhere and get, at least get the van nice and warm. Ah. <sighs>
It's been a long day. I'll see you guys back here tomorrow for another, uh, another day. Oh gosh, what a day. Anyway guys, we out baby. We out.